another vloggy vlog 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 I'm Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design so I'm at Bush Houston Intercontinental Airport another day of commuting to Dallas Fort Worth just like last week the flight is oversold this one is oversold a lot I think there's um, right now like two available seats and maybe Whole bunch of oversolds <laughs> and like 10 revenue standby passengers and then i'm like down on the non-rev standby list i think i'm like five on there so unless i can somehow snag a jump seat i probably won't be making this first flight but let's see how it goes y'all know right, y'all so i'm here at the gate this is a mainline aa flight so one person is taking the jump seat. Um, there's two other people ahead of me for the jump seat because remember y'all, while commuting, um, and if you're gonna take the jump seat, it's um, whosoever middle goes first. So since this is a mainline flight and I'm regional, the mainline flight attendants get access to the jump seat before me, even though I may be checked in before them. So it is still first come first serve, but when it comes to the jump seat, main line goes before regional on their aircrafts. And regional, we don't have no jump seat. So <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, all right, whatever sis. It's one of them things like you can't do nothing about it. So we'll see what happens. And glory be to God, y'all. Walking down the jet bridge. And I got a first class seat. About to take me a good nap. I don't know how, but let's go, let's go, let's go to work. Oh, hey, so we have made it to Dallas. We got here at like 7:30. It's like 7:57 now. I just came down to the cool lounge, put my lunch kit in the refrigerator, keep my food cool. So today we have three legs. So yeah, today we have three legs. We do a um, little rock turn on the 175, and then. <laughs> I have like seven hours of ground time before my next flight, which I didn't even realize that was happening. I picked up this ship as OT, because um, remember I told y'all I'm part-time this month and I did that purposely, just so I can have a lot more flexibility of when and when I don't work, because sometimes you're not able to drop your trips and swap them and trade them just because of staffing and things like that. So I didn't want to get stuck with any trips and then not be able to get out of them. So I was like, I'll just work part-time hours, let them assign me 35 hours. So that way the rest of my schedule is open for the month. And when I am available to fly and I don't need to be home to do, y'all know, real estate stuff, then I can pick up a trip. So that's exactly what I did with this one. But um, I was like, okay. I was looking at trips that had the most hours that didn't include four legs and this was one of them. So this trip is worth like 15 hours, but I had no idea. I didn't even look at the fact that we have seven hours in between getting back from Little Rock and then leaving back again tonight to wherever we're laying over. So when we get back more than likely, I'll probably go to the last pad because I'm not gonna stay up here for seven hours. Not happening. All right, y'all, I'm on board. Um, 175 we are going to little rock we'll be boarding in the next five minutes um i'm working position one um ellie's back there we met in the crew lounge a time or two if you're watching this ellie hi um so you know it's nice to fly with somebody that is a little familiar to you uh, i think well i'm pretty sure or well, i know this is the only leg we'll be working together because tonight when I get back, sorry y'all, I'm not looking at the camera, I'm trying to sign in. Um, tonight when, well, when we get back from the turn, 
remember earlier I was saying we have that seven hour sit, which I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and request a day hotel, which would count as one of my commuter hotels because we're in base. So it would be counted as a commuter hotel. Um, but I think I'm going to just go ahead and do that because I don't want to sit up here forever. I don't want to do the train thing to and from the crash pad. So um, let me just sign into my little device, make sure I'm all logged in, ready to go, request my commuter hotel, and then let's go to Little Rock. Excuse my roughness, y'all. I should have got my eyebrows done, but I want to grow the Meg out because she made them too thin last time, so I'm looking all kind of rough. Um, but we landed in Little Rock, and I checked to see if they had signed my hotel, and they denied it, so I just called. And I'm just really confused. Like, I need to read. This is when you need to read your, um, your contract. They, they denied it because they said it's um it's in base so you can't use a day room when you're in base but it's more than five hours it's seven hours so it's gonna have to be something that i look into and really figure out because that just it doesn't sound right to me like what does in base have to do with any of it like it's still more than a five hour sit so you want me to just sit nowhere like what if I needed to use a community hotel like I'm just really confused so huh, I guess I'll just be going back to the crash pad maybe we'll see say hi, hi. <laughs> she's like no 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 but now look at you <laughs> all right y'all we're back to Dallas I'm gonna go try to figure out where I'm about to go for the next six hours. Oh goodness. Right, y'all, so I'm back at the crash pad. It is like three o'clock. So basically what happened. So I put in the request for the hotel for the day sleep because usually or normally, whatever, when you have a sit longer than five hours, the company will usually give you a hotel to go rest because you're sitting for longer than five hours at the airport. So they give you a hotel, right? So I put in the request for a hotel. They said they denied it originally because I put in a request for a day hotel and they only assign day hotels when you were at an outstation. So since I'm in base, I would have had to request a commuter hotel and use one out of the four that I am allotted every month. So I was like, okay, this was me talking to my union representative because I was unsure as to why they denied it. So I went back and I requested just a regular commuter hotel and they denied it again, y'all. And so I'm like, okay, well, what's up? Like, why are we denying this? Um, because as y'all know, I had a seven hour sit basically seven hours in between my last flight into my next flight that's what we mean by sit um so basically now this is what i'm talking to crew scheduling trying to figure out why it's being denied and he basically said something changed as as of yesterday that we can no longer use our commuter hotels for day sits for day hotels which makes no sense. So as I'm on the phone with crew scheduling, I'm messaging back and forth with my union rep. And he was like, you know, get as many details as you can. You know, who are you talking to? Who sent this email? Blah, blah, blah. Because according to them, our union had not been notified of this change. I'm not going to go too deep into everything that they were saying. But basically, the union and crew scheduling are not on one accord with this new change a rule that they're saying that they have so i had to come back to the crash pad long story short because they wouldn't give us a hotel now to those of y'all which i don't think any other airline u.s airline that i know of um gives their employees commuter hotels so this may seem kind of like girl what you complaining for at least i get hotels blah blah but the thing is if you're gonna give us four hotels 
that we can use while we're working. So normally you can use a commuter hotel the night before you start work, during your 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 trip, or you know the last night of your trip. And you know if you want to stay the night and then hop on a flight the next morning, like I did in my last vlog, right? Um. So what Union was telling me is that normally. If as a line holder, I'm assuming, because I don't think as reserve you can do this. This is why I got a little confused earlier. But normally as a line holder, if you have a sit like this that is, you know, more than the five hours, he was like, you should be able to use a commuter hotel and, you know, stay the day there. So that's why we're just a little confused because it really shouldn't matter when we're using our commuter hotels just as long as we don't go over our four. So if I choose to use my commuter hotel during the day for this seven hour sit, I should be able to do that. Now they're saying that we can't. So that's why I'm back at the crash pad because I didn't have time for the hoopla um, and it wasn't going to get solved today and I didn't want to be sitting up at the airport the whole time. So I'm going to take me like a little two, three hour nap undisturbed because nobody else is here at the crash pad right now. It's a lovely Sunday and I guess everybody's out living their best lives. So I'm gonna take a nap and we will go back to work. All right, y'all, I am feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, energized. <sighs> Ready to do this one little leg to Abilene. It's probably less than an hour we're staying in Texas. <sighs> I needed that little nap. <laughs> I went to bed late last night, y'all. Like I was attempting to go to bed and then my mom and her siblings came over and started acting a hoop um, or came up into my room, came over and started acting up. So I didn't end up going to bed until like 11 o'clock um, and then I was up at 4 o'clock to catch my commute, which is on my, you know, I'm a big girl. I should have went to bed. But thank God for that nap that I took and I ate my dinner and I rewashed my face and uh, ready to give these people we're going to Abilene, the best flight attendant service ever. <laughs> Train's here. Well, y'all, this is what we got today. So, I'll oh, saying on. We made it to Abilene. Y'all know I'm not really one to do the whole hotel tour thing, but this place is interesting. Let me give, let me give y'all the view from outside. So, right? Okay. This is my room. <laughs> and. We got a whole wet bar over there. Like I'm about to turn up and party. Turn up. A whole, okay. For a dryer microwave. Y'all know I like that. And um, this is our bedroom. All right. This is me. <laughs> And bathroom. Why they got the shower curtain like that? All right, y'all. It's been a long day. <laughs> but we made it. We made it. This last fight was interesting. I had a guy on there. I don't know if he had a drink or two. He was a little weird. I had to kind of check him when he got on. Let me tell you something. If you're a flight attendant or aspiring flight attendant, don't let these customers run you, okay? It's your aircraft. You run that aircraft. So, did I show y'all that my CD player MP3 thing was broken? So, I had to read all my announcements. So, yeah, I had to do all my announcements. There was nothing speaking for me. Um, that's always a doozy when you have to do the safety demo. Um, but, as I was making one of the announcements, you know, and I was saying some of you know, if you need something, please let us know. Some guy behind me is screaming, I need water. And not, 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 there's nothing nice about screaming at me, first of all. So, I need water. I need water. And I'm trying to ignore him. But he keeps screaming. <laughs> so, after I finished my announcement, I went up to him and I said, sir, I said, if you need something, ding your flight attendant call button don't scream at me you know and i said i will get you some water once we get in the air like I, who are you talking to <laughs> like who are you screaming at so he goes yes ma'am 
So this is the same guy that I feel like he might have had some drinks, but I really don't know. So I was keeping my eye on him pretty much the whole flight. Like, so we sat on the taxiway for a minute because, you know, it was just backed up, whatever. The whole time he's talking to the guy next to him. And I couldn't really tell if he was with people or not, like the people around him. Like, it was, I couldn't hear the conversation, right? So I couldn't really tell you know, like, if they were comfortable talking to him or not. Because some were talking back, some weren't. Some looked like they were ignoring him. I really wasn't sure. So, anyways, we get up and I give him his water. Um, he goes to the restroom, goes back and sits down. And the guy sitting down next to him has his headphones on, you know, mask tight. You know, to, like, in his phone, like, just trying to focus on that. And the people behind him, they, you know, they kind of just look like they were talking about, you know, something. So, anyways, he comes back, sits back down in his seat. And he starts talking to the guy. And I can tell that the guy looks like he doesn't want to be bothered. And I'm like, okay, well, clearly, you know, this guy doesn't want to be bothered. And the people behind him, I don't, they're saying something to him, but I can't, you know, I still can't make out what they're saying. So, next thing I see him kind of leaning over and, like, kind of tapping the, the guy on his show. He didn't look aggressive by no means. But, like, that's still not appropriate when you can't be touching people on the plane. when You, you don't know them. Like, you can't do that. So... I already knew his name because um, we, Jose was yelling at me. I checked him and I used his name. I was like, Jose, <laughs> I'm going to yell at Alexia. <laughs> That's not what we're going to be doing. Okay. So when he was reaching over to the guy, I said, Jose, you know, I, there was two seats open. The first two seats were open. And I said, Jose, come come sit over here. And he was like, why? I said, he was, I said just come sit over here. So he got up and said, and, he just seemed like, I don't know, something's on his heart. Like, he was just troubled, just a little disturbed. He's like, I'm just trying to preach the, the, the good Lord Jesus. I'm just trying to let the people on the plane know that Jesus loves them. And I was like, yeah. He's like, you believe in Jesus? I was like, of course, you know, yes, I believe in Jesus. And then he went on down the spiral of conversation about how, you know, I guess his wife was supposedly someone on the plane, but I don't think she was. I think he was kind of, I don't, something's wrong with the man. <laughs> something was wrong with the man and I was just trying to get this little 33 minute flight over so I let him talk my ear off until we landed <sighs> now I'm going to bed <laughs> I'm going to bed <laughs> <I'm> done <laughs> good morning good morning so I can see gym attire but I need to go downstairs I think breakfast ends at 9 30 and see if I can get some milk for my oatmeal. I have oatmeal with me and I don't like my oatmeal with water. So hopefully I can grab a thing of milk, go work out, come back upstairs, eat, and edit a vlog for y'all. So I didn't get any milk because I only had whole milk and skim milk. No 2%. I really wanted almond but I knew that was going to be a stretch. And this gym don't have no free weights. Treadmill, elliptical, bike, they got a row machine, and then one of these things, but no free weights. So let me rearrange what I was going to do in my mind or find me a different active workout to do because, you know, I still do active every now and then when I decide to work out. Um, all right, let's get it in. Oh, camera's the wrong way, but y'all can read it. Look. Ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. A little gym motivation. <laughs> All right, y'all. And we are out of the weird hotel room. Hold on. Let me pull the curtains so I can get to my door. <laughs> Anyways, is my lip too vampy? Is it like too fall? I mean, it is September. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to put on my mask anyway. So... And my, my cheeks are real cheeky rosy. I put lipstick on my cheeks because I didn't have any um, blush with me. But that doesn't matter either because my mask is going to cover it up. So here we go. Oh, so we're at the airport. I got on the shuttle and the <laughs> phone was like, ah, y'all see Mobile is canceled? So one and done today, going back to Dallas. Same thing, trying to decide do I use a commuter hotel or do I go to the crash pad? We'll see what we do. Ah, back on the good old 140. That 145 last night. 
in the non-working testing testing mp3 y'all <laughs> okay let's rock and roll we've got like 35 minutes to dallas and then we're done oh, uh, look at that. hello there oh, look at that Lipstick just sweating. sweating and smudging. My hair all over the place. Yeah, hey, bro, it's cute. Thank you. I had to pan up in the Printy front. came to pick me up, y'all. Hey, y'all. Because I ain't feel like training. We headed to the CP. You done working? Yeah, for now. I'm sitting up here trying to pick and, choose, pick and choose uh, <laughs> which places I want to go to. It's too much. Yeah, it's you, hot. It is. Well, it's hot, but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Printy is working for uh, the census. She's doing census. Make sure you do your census. It's very important. Y'all know you do your census every 10 years, you know, so they know demographics and all that stuff in the United States. And it's for funding for your neighborhood, your community, for, for schools, parks, libraries. Always think about the kids for the next 10 years. Think it's about important. the kids for the next 10 years. Very important. So... Printy been hustling, and I, you have a trip tomorrow too, right? No, census. I'm doing the census um, the next four days, and then I leave Friday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So she's still a flight attendant, but you know, as a flight attendant, see, you can do all kind of things, all kind of lovely things. So we're about to head back to the CP. My flight got canceled. The, the flight we were going to Mobile, Alabama, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, I guess there's a hurricane going there. So, thank you. So they, uh, look, look at that. So they canceled the flight to Mobile, which is fine with me. I've never been to Mobile, so I guess, you know, it'd been nice to. You're not missing anything. I didn't think me. I was missing nothing. But, anyways, y'all, that's it. See y'all in the morning when we, I think I have a 10 30 report to pick back up and start the trip again. Good morning. We got outfit of the day. Pants, vest, short sleeve shirt, scarf. This is gonna come off, of course. It's laying down my little edges. I'm gonna put my shoes on. Printy. Oh, Lord, she got me on camera. Yeah, let's go. One leg today, one oh, day. Right. We are over here in the E terminal. They changed uh, where KCM is. Oh, there's something on my mask. Oh, y'all hear that? Okay, there was a uh, customer person in the terminal real loud real ghetto like um anyways did i tell y'all where i'm going y'all see that grand island nebraska never been there um i don't know what there is to do there i'm guessing nothing <laughs> so i think it might be like an hour and a half flight maybe i need to look and see um yeah, a smooth hour and 21 minutes to Grand Island, Nebraska. That's not too bad. One leg. And we're done for the day. And then tomorrow is our last day. One flight back to Dallas. It's like 6 a.m. I should be home in Texas by 10 a.m. tomorrow. Home in Houston, Texas by 10 a.m. tomorrow. So it hasn't been too bad of a trip. It definitely makes up for last week. <laughs> oh. And there's only 11 people on the plane. Mm. Well, we want more people to be on the plane because we want more business, but I don't mind the light load at all. Not at all. Now, how thoughtful was this of the cleaning crew in the exit row? They put the safety information cards there for the people sitting in the exit row so they can read them and, oh, so sweet. All right, I'm ready to get up in the air and let's roll out. I got a lot going on here. Got scarves happening. Need to put my hair up in the pony. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's such a nice day outside. Made it to Grand Island. I don't know what there is to do here, but it's such a nice day. I'm like determined to find something to do. So you know, you're in a small town when literally. There's one Lyft driver, Uber driver, whatever he drives. She's like, yeah, his name is Richard. You wanna, you want me to give you his phone number? Like one person that does Uber Lyft out here. And I was like, what's, 
what's there to do? Like, can I get out the hotel? And she was just like, there's nothing to do. <laughs> Great. So, but Captain Ian, he was like, there's some pretty good places to eat downtown. So he's going to call the Lyft driver, I guess, in a little bit and um, see if I want to go. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just take a nap and just say, forget it. And just stay in the hotel room like always. So I just got an update from the union guy that I was talking to the other day with the whole um, commuter hotel debacle in the seven hour sit. He says that I guess the updated language via the contract now, it seems like we're only going to be able to use our commuter hotels before or after the pairing ends and not during, which I don't really, I mean, I don't, who knows why, who knows, but <sighs> sigh, <laughs> sigh. Okay, so another update. So actually, the contract has always stated that the commuter hotels that our lovely company gives us the four each month are only supposed to be used before or after your pairing. So if I commute in the night before, then I can use it. Or if I have to stay the night that my trip is done, then I can use it. But we were never supposed to use it in the middle of a pairing. And I guess now management has decided to, I guess, really enforce that rule because people are abusing it. So basically, you know, like if we go to a hotel and if we need a day room, technically checkout time is at 12 and check-in time is at 3. So I guess people weren't using two commuter rooms. They were just using one and like stretching out their time. So long story short, people are abusing it and not doing it correctly. So now they're enforcing the rule. So I guess I just happened to fall right at where they decided to enforce the rule and I got screwed. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't really get screwed because I was intending to use it correctly, but hey, it is what it is. So y'all, in the room, out of my business, and I saw a commercial with a hamburger. I said, ooh, that hamburger look good. And this is how I know the devil is busy. Because as the hamburger popped up in my mind and I thought about it, I had a flashback to when the shuttle driver pulled into the hotel. And I remember seeing a Burger King out the corner of my eye, right across from the hotel. So, I'm headed to Burger King right now. <laughs> Just go get me a little hamburger, a Whopper, uh, and come back upstairs, watch the big brother, and go to bed. Like, I took a little bit nap, but not really, because I got real estate things going on that's driving me insane. So, which is good, because I didn't really need to take a nap, because we got a 6 a.m. flight. 4 a.m. wake up time, which means, uh, but where the Burger King at? What's the closest exit? We came from that way. Let me find the Burger King. See, y'all see that, y'all? I literally just walked out the door. And there it is. There. Why don't look open, though? Ooh. Oh, no. Somebody going through the drive through It's open. Look at that. Like, five minutes later, I'm back in the room. I got my Whopper. Woman Evolve on the TV. Do y'all listen to, um... Let me let me pause Sarah Jakes Roberts for a second. Woman Evolve podcast is one of my favorite ones, and now she does a podcast on YouTube too, so I get to watch. She's T D Jakes' daughter, preacher. It's a really good podcast. Like it's like um, current events mixed with a little bit of Christian Christ in there. So it's very entertaining, but very uplifting for the spirit as well. So if you're into that. Woman Evolve podcast. Anyways, I'm probably not going to talk to y'all for the rest of the night because, uh, you know, got to be up early. See y'all in the morning. Good morning, lovely people. We have made it to day four of the four day. It's been pretty smooth. I'm here in the little breakfast area. It's like 5 a.m., 4.59. I was looking to try to get some tea, but it seems like they only have juice and coffee. So, oh well, let's go. Is she near? No. Do you sleep still? Uh, <laughs>
I heard like somebody knocking on his door kind of late last night. Maybe bringing them food. So y'all saw that clip I was showing you on the TV that was the news of the um, hurricane that hit Mobile where we were supposed to go um, two nights ago and leave yesterday morning. So with hurricanes, you know, you just never really know if they're really and truly going to hit or not. Um, but I guess this one did. So thank God they canceled our flight, y'all. Did not want to be stuck. You know, here hurricane miss. So, anyways, on board, going. We're going back to Dallas. Just a one leg today, right? Yeah, just one leg today. Um, probably like an hour and a half flight. Easy peasy. I deserved easy peasy this week. We've made it back to Dallas, y'all. It is 7.41. My flight starts boarding at 8 o'clock. Looks like I'm going home. Y'all know I love her. Y'all almost forgot to end the vlog. I'm back in Houston. I got on that plane and went straight to sleep. Oh. But that's the end of the four day. I go back to work in like nine days or so. And we have two four days back to back. So, I hope y'all enjoyed, as always. Until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Bye!